Hello, friends of Powerhouse Bakery. I'm Suzanne Parker, and I'm the founder and CEO of this funky little bakery that doesn't look like a bakery much at all when you walk in. Um, seven years ago, I opened Powerhouse Bakery with the goal to show the world that healthy can taste amazing. We started out with five little muffins, and pretty soon I realized that was not going to be enough uh, to really fill my, my passion of showing the world that Sometimes when we think healthy is giving up lots of flavor and, and enjoyment in food, they're wrong because we can do all kinds of great things. So while I started out with just a couple of muffins and was determined to make gluten-free taste wonderful, seven years later, now we've got all the meals covered, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Today, what I want to show you is breakfast. If you've tuned in with us before, you know that I'm a registered dietitian and I love to help people understand what healthy is all about. I love to show people what protein, carbohydrates, and fats looks like when you put a healthy tilt on it. You know, I've often said there's really only three food groups that we have to pick from. And when we look at protein foods, they can come from the earth and they can also come from animal products. Um, when we look at carbohydrates, um, they kind of have a bad name still, surprisingly. Um, oftentimes people think that Things like bananas and, and apples and um, even potatoes are bad because they're carbohydrates. Not true. Um, what I want to show you today is how to use complex carbohydrates in, in a great way to help jumpstart your day with the most important meal of breakfast. And then we have our fat group, which is also very important. It wasn't long ago when fats were considered the unhealthy thing that we needed to cut out of all the foods that we eat. Again, we've proven that, that that's not true and that healthy fats are really important. Even saturated fats, which we once thought were something that we wanted to cut out, not so much true. Our bodies are very good at handling saturated fat as well as the polyunsaturates and the monounsaturates. So we know that in things like beautiful nuts and seeds, we get a blend of saturated fats as well as monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. So again, the breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And so what we wanna do is figure out a way to blend in a nice even ratio, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, and how do we make it still taste great? So again, lots of ways to do it. What I'm gonna show you today is ways to increase the flavor profile with, you guessed it, wonderful spices and lots of crunch factor. We've got colors, we've got texture variation, and we've got some sweetness from fruit, and we've got some wonderful little zing that comes in one of my absolute favorite fruits, which is the lemon. And then we're gonna use a little bit of organic coconut sugar, which if you've been in Powerhouse Bakery, you know that's one of my favorite ways to add a little bit of sweetness. And we're also gonna experiment with some of the, the protein foods that we add in extra nutrition with a protein food that's, yeah, it's a little processed, because um, you wouldn't find this beautiful powder in nature, but it's a great way to add a little bit more protein, if we want to, to a breakfast meal. Um, and of course, we can always add in the favorite eggs. So I'm gonna show you how to do those as well. So there's gonna be three breakfasts that I'm gonna show you how to do. Uh, and they're pretty popular here at Powerhouse Bakery. We're gonna do the, the apple awesome over our French toast. And so I'm gonna start with our wonderful bread. And then I'm going to top it over with uh, one of my very favorite toppings that's made with apples, warm spices, a little bit of vegan butter, which is this product that I love to use. This Earth Balance brand is fabulous. Yes, you could use regular butter, um, but we try to go as much plant-based as we can in order to just show off some of the nutrient value there. So you'll have a little bit of uh, butter with those warm spices, a little bit of coconut sugar, and of course the beautiful sweetness and fiber rich apple. The apples are great because they're loaded with soluble fiber as well as a little bit of insoluble fiber. So remember the soluble fiber is from fruits, um, it's very common in fruits. So strawberries as well as melons, um, even oats are gonna have some of that soluble fiber. And all that means is that our bodies are able to digest it. It goes into our GI tract and it adds a little bit of hydration to the contents of our GI tract, which is a great thing to increase transit time as we're going through the gut. We want 
nothing to stick around for very long, if you know what I mean. So we want to make sure that the extra fluid in the gut, thanks to that soluble fiber, things are going to move really quickly out of our gut. So the apple is a great way to do that. So that's going to be our apple awesome that we top our French toast with. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to do the, the parfait. A lot of people love our parfait. Um, they come in and want to know if they can just buy the yogurt. Um, they love the, the granolas that we put on top, which I've shown you before. But they want to know how to get that wonderful yogurt. So today I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'm also going to show you how to do power oats. Power oats is so convenient. Whenever I describe it at Parents Bakery, I say it's like the Starbucks oats only better. And that's because we load it up with all the minerals that you find in nuts and seeds. You add some protein, which we can use this wonderful plant-based protein, which is from rice uh, protein. Or we can use the peanut butter one that I showed you in a minute ago. Great ways to go about it. All packed together in a nice, easy container that you can bring with you. You can make in large containers and use it each day if you want. And I wanted to show you how cool these little uh, to-go containers are. So this is perfect to add your power oats to it. So if you don't want to use the plastics in the microwave, this is a great option. It's one that I use myself all the time. And it lowers the contents in our landfill because, of course, we get to reuse this many times over. Glass is so great. Then I'm going to also show you um, how to use the, the oats in a very easy way so that they're going to quickly dissolve and absorb all the flavors. Alrighty, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is do a quick preparation of our apple. So again, I mentioned the apple is so valuable and it's one of those fruits that lasts a long time too. So don't be afraid to get a good bundle of apples and keep them in your chiller and they work great because they hold on to their nutrients because of that skin and they're pretty easy to work with. In this particular recipe, I'm not going to peel them. You can if you prefer, but I actually really like when the peel is in there. It's going to give us a little extra fiber. You know, I mentioned the soluble fiber, which is part of the pectin, um, but the skin is going to give us some of that insoluble fiber. So that's something that we definitely want to make good use of. So for my apple awesome, I'm going to just chunk up the apple. It doesn't have to be perfect or pretty. You notice I switched knives. That one was dull. And so you have to definitely find a nice sharp knife and typically the more you spend on knives and get some that are very hard material, they're going to hold their edge a lot better. And if you have a sharpening stone, a wet stone, um, that is really great to have in the house too because you're going to need to sharpen any knives. So on this recipe, I'm going to use um, probably two apples. Um, these are pretty good size. Now, picking apples is something that is really an art form because if they're too sweet, they don't have any interest. If they're too sour, well, then they're too sour. So this particular apple is a jazz, which is a pretty nice one. It tends to be pretty tart. It gives up lots of juice, which you like. And um, in general, the green apples are another good one because they are fairly tart. You've got that element covered, and then you can add in your sweetness um, to adjust for the apple. But an apple that's all kind of overly sweet, like sometimes the red delicious, um, or sometimes the gold yellows, are just a little bit too sweet. They don't have that, that complex flavor profile, which we really like. So I encourage you to find an apple variety that you like, and kind of experiment, see which one works best for your cooking style and kind of the recipes that you're going to do. If you've ever made um, my um, apple berry crisp, we put apples in that as well, and we use that as a lower layer. And in that recipe, it is better to peel it just because you want to be able to cut through that, that parfait um, and not have a lot of skin in your bite. So see how simple this is? Just an easy chop. This is just one apple, and it was actually a pretty good size one. So I think I'm going to just leave it here. The next thing I'm going to add in is my zest. So you always want to zest before you squeeze. So I'm going to get all that beautiful rind off. Um, this is another really important kitchen tool. Every kitchen needs to have a zester, and maybe even two, because they do get dull after a while, so you want to make sure that you 
replace them after, you know, probably a few years. Depends on how much you use it. We have three here at the bakery, and they do get replaced about every year. So I'm going to just quickly go through all that rind. It's important that you wash your fruit before you use them. Um, even with all the, the scare, you know, with um, sharing viruses, we want to make sure that we minimize our risk. And washing fruits with a, a mild soap and water is perfectly fine. I usually use a dish soap um, and rinse them well. And then I, once I get everything into the bakery, um, I wash it and then I know that they're safe. So shop, get your produce, immediately wash it, dry it, and then put it in your fridge and you'll never miss it. Okay, so I got most of the orange zest off. Honestly, that's such an important part is to have that wonderful tartness. So sometimes you could even use two lemons if you feel like they're small or not giving away a lot of, of their juice. Now notice I've got some seeds going on, so I'm going to just squeeze right into my hand and I'm going to find each of those seeds and catch them. There's a lot of fancy ways to do it. You could use a, a special uh, juicer or you could strain it, but this is fast. We like fast at Carrot's Bakery. So I'm going to go ahead and do one more. Let me see. Again, fortunately, this lemon doesn't have too many seeds, so I'm not going to have too much that comes out. All right, there we go. So now we've got a good amount of juice that's kind of starting to form on these beautiful apples, so I love that. And part of the value of putting the the juice there is it's going to pull more of the juice from the apples. So that's going to be what makes our, our extra yummy sauce. Every once in a while I might add in a little bit of um, orange juice, but for the most part, if your apples are good, they're going to give up the juice and that's really what we want. And every once in a while I could add a little bit of the essential oil to the recipe that just gives a little bit of bonus. We're going to be using this a lot today in these recipes. So I'm going to get a good stir, make sure to get all those good flavors going on. And now I'm going to add in my coconut sugar. So to one apple, I'm going to put probably two tablespoons. So that's probably about right. I'll show you what a tablespoon is. You want to get really specific, tablespoon there. So I, I probably got pretty close. There is our coconut sugar. Now with the apple awesome topping, um, it's gonna cook down like I mentioned. So it's gonna be chunky and beautiful and we're gonna actually be able to use this apple awesome um, over our yogurt also. So it's a great thing to make in advance and have a good amount just in your fridge ready to go because it's perfect for so many applications. Now I'm gonna build my spice blend. So with the apples, I want to do all the warm spices. So I've got cardamom. And usually I do a two to one, which means um, the cardamom's pretty strong. So it's going to have half as much as more traditional flavors like cinnamon. So I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of the cardamom. And the other one that's pretty strong is the garam masala. Those. And now I'm going to add some allspice. And I'll give you this recipe, but again, it's one of those things where um, you could make your own spice blend. It's kind of like your baking spice, and you can make it just to your liking. But in general, a, a baking spice should include allspice, cardamom, of course, cinnamon. You may or may not want to add in the garam masala. That's kind of an unusual flavor, but it's one that I really love. Um, nutmeg is again a, a really nice one to add into the warm spices. So I'm going to cut back a little bit on the nutmeg, half as much as I did on the previous mix. And then last but not least, cloves. I love cloves. Another quarter of a teaspoon, so the same amount of cloves as nutmeg. So look how beautiful that little spice blend is. So I've got cinnamon, cardamom, I've got cloves, allspice, and coriander. So fantastic blend. All right, now I'm going to just stir these around. You might not use them all, but we sure could. Again, this would be so nice if it just going to have a really strong flavor and then we can 
just use a small amount as kind of a, a compote as we will. I'm going to start there and make sure I get good coverage. I always teach my cooks that it's really important to um, use your, your, your eyes and your senses as you're cooking. Make sure that you're getting the right amount and of course you got to taste it too. But I'm liking how much is on there right now. We've got good coverage on all of our apple pieces. I love how it's getting a nice blend. And it smells so good. All right, so I'm pretty sure that's going to cook down enough. I don't see a lot of juice coming up, so I might end up adding, adding a little bit of orange juice. But I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the, on the stove top and let it cook for about 15 minutes. Okay, so I put that on low for about 15 minutes, and that way it's going to cook down and get those apples nice and soft. We don't want them to be super mushy, but honestly, you could. You could turn it into almost like a chunky applesauce, and it's amazing. So that will be what we top our French toast, and we might even top our, um, our parfait or our beautiful yogurt. So let's get to that one next. This is a plain yogurt. Um, it's the H-E-B organic. Greek style plain. And so, you know, it's so important to us to decrease the amount of sugars. Um, how do we still make this taste amazing? So again, we're going to use a lot of the things you see on, on our table for our breakfast items. So I'm going to start with some lemon. And so I'm going to add some zest. And I really encourage you to do a large batch of um, making some special yogurt because it'll last really well in your fridge. And then you don't have to make it so often. So I'm going to just tap in that beautiful lemon rind. And of course, I do have my essential oil sitting right beside me. So I'm going to be adding that in too. Now the flavor I have is the wild orange. I tell you what, you can get so adventurous. Um, sometimes I add in um, tangerine, sometimes grapefruit. Um, you could even add a little touch of cloves or lavender. So have fun with those essential oils. If you don't already have a place that you can purchase them, if you go online, you can find Young Living and uh, Deuterra, and I think there's other brands out there, but they're really fun to get to work with. All right, so there is my zest. And then, of course, I'm going to juice, because we always do both. I never want to leave a poor nude lemon in the fridge where I've taken off its skin and throw it back in there. It'll never last, so don't do that. Look at how many seeds are in this one. So, yeah, it's going to... It's going to be tough to make sure I don't get any seeds in my beautiful, look, I already did get one. Squeeze as much as I can out. There's one. And I will get that little seed out of there. And we'll do the next half. Just as many seeds in that one. There we go. All right, so now we've got the zest. And we've got the lemon juice, so don't sample it yet because it's going to be pretty sour. But i got to tell you, I, um, I love Bulgarian yogurt, and it is quite sour. But it just is refreshing. It actually tastes really good. This one, though, we do want to have a little bit sweeter profile. And so um, we have the coconut sugar on the table, which is what I'm going to add. Now, in the recipe that I'm going to give you, you can also use honey and agave. So they, they actually mix in better, but because I wanted to kind of show you from this blend, I'm just going to show you how nice it is to still use coconut sugar. It gives it a really neat little texture too. So with, um, this is 16 ounces of yogurt. So I'm going to add in, and I'll use my tablespoon measure again, so I'm honest and I tell you exactly how much. We're going to do two teaspoons of coconut sugar into our plain Greek yogurt. Because you know, we can always taste it and see if we want to add a little bit more. The problem is, if you dump in a bunch, you can't take it out. And then you're in, you end up eating a little too sweet and you think, gosh, I could have probably enjoyed it with a little less. But look how pretty that is. It just has a beautiful texture to it. So you can absolutely have this with um, fresh fruit, so those apples that I cut up would be so good in this. And again, we want our breakfast meal to be rich in protein, complex carbohydrates, and fats. So with this beautiful yogurt, there's lots I can do with it. I can add my nuts to it. Uh, of course, the mighty seeds are a great way to add in 
protein, carbohydrate, and fats, and fiber, and minerals, so I love this product. But it's just a wonderful way to have a quick breakfast. So now, let me load it into my container so I can have breakfast on the go if I want. Or I could even blend these put and put them in the fridge and I can have my, all my breakfast set up for the week. So we're gonna start off, this was 16 ounces, and so I'm gonna use about half of it. There we go, and that's gonna be my, so the yogurt is gonna count as protein because the Greek yogurt is very high in protein. It has some carbohydrates, but not a lot. Um, and now we're gonna start adding in our healthy fats. So I can use these beautiful chopped almonds. And I'm gonna start with a teaspoon at a time because I want you to get to see how the calories add up too. So there's one teaspoon of toasted chopped almonds. And I'm gonna put in a couple of walnut halves. So a lot of times I talk about um, two or three walnut halves and it sounds like, gosh, they're so stingy. That's not much at all. But they, when you put them in something, it actually turns out to be a pretty, amount, pretty good amount. So here is one half, and then these are broken, so I'm going to count that two and a half. So that's two and a half walnut halves. So that's going to turn out to be a pretty good amount, especially when we put it all together. So I'm just going to break them up by hand, add them in. And so see, it gives you plenty of nuts. It's a really nice way to add in a little chunk. If I had used my scooper or my tablespoon, I might have gotten more than I really needed. And it's such a nice um, variety to be able to get a couple different nuts. Now I'm going to go to the seeds. And here's my beautiful Mighty Seeds. And put in a teaspoon of that. Beautiful. All kinds of beautiful colors and textures. And I like to do at least two seeds. So I've got the Mighty Seed blend, which albeit is three. But I want to do one more color and texture with pumpkin seeds. It just adds such a nice color additive. I could use pistachios. That's another beautiful green nut that would give it a lot of flavor and, and texture. And now I'm just going to sprinkle in a little bit of my dried cherries. So again, it might be a half a teaspoon. Not much at all. Just for color. Because you just need a little bite of it. And I'm going to add in a couple of dried currants. There we go. So that is our beautiful parfait. I could add granola, but I've got plenty of carbohydrate, proteins, and fats all in one here. It actually becomes very even. Um, it's 20 grams of protein from that 8 ounces of the, uh, the Greek yogurt. It's got 20 grams of carbohydrates from the sugar, as well as the cherries and a little bit of the carbohydrates come from the yogurt. And then I've got about 10 grams of fat from those nuts. So that's a pretty good meal. And I can put the lid on it and pop it in the fridge and it'll be a great snack for later. Okay, so that is our parfait using the granola. So one more thing I'm going to show you is how to do the power oats. And that's something that we sell and we love to show off at Powerhouse Bakery. So I'm going to start and just build into my container. So the first thing we're going to do is add in the oats. So again, just like at Starbucks, they give you oats and then all the stuff that you can put on if you want. We're going to build it all at once. So one cup of cooked oats is actually a half a cup of raw oats. So there's a half a cup of the raw oats. And I do use a gluten-free oat here. Um, Bob's Red Mill is a great brand. And you can get organic, you can get gluten-free and organic. Um, HEB is a great brand if you're not worried about being gluten-free. But honestly, we've tested theirs many times and it's never come up with a positive on a gluten test. So they do a really good product. So here we go with our half a cup. Now I'm going to add in some of my beautiful spice blend that I already made. So again, this is why it's so nice to have it already done. Make your own little jar and have it uh, on the top of your counter or your spice rack because it's got a lot of uses. Another secret, I love to add the spice blend to rice. Oh my gosh, so good. Especially if you're going to use it with lamb or maybe a pulled pork or even just a vegan dish with some roasted eggplant. Adding warm spices is amazing to rice. So, little tidbit. All right, so there's our spices. And now I'm going to start to add in our nuts. So just like the, um, the yogurt parfait, I'm going to do the same idea. So we've got a teaspoon of pumpkin seeds. We've got a teaspoon of almonds. Here's our one and a half walnut half. So here's my one and a half. And I can just kind of break them up. Um, we used to chop almonds and they would just go everywhere. So 
out. Figured it's kind of nice to get, keep them chunky anyway. And here's my dried cherries. So I'm getting a little handful here, and that's just about a teaspoon. I'm pretty darn close. And here comes our currants or raisins. You could use those too. And of course, no, no rules here. You don't have to use all these fruits. It just gives us a little bit of the complex carbohydrates. And whenever you um, do use the fruits that have been dried, um, watch out that they don't have added sugars. So a great um, cherry or blueberry will not have added sugars. It's okay if there's a little bit, but try to find the ones that are unsulfured and unsweetened. And now in this one, I'm also going to add our Brazil nuts. So we like to save five Brazil nuts a day. That'd be a little much for my, uh, my oatmeal, but I'm going to at least do three. So I'm going to give a quick chop to these nice big Brazil nuts and I'm going to add them in. If you've ever had my Brazilian granola, they have about three Brazil nuts per serving. So I love that we add those in. So there is our Brazil nuts and my last add-in, which is the Mighty Seeds. So can you tell it's way better than what you get at Starbucks? This is a half a teaspoon, so I'm going to do two scoops. And there I have my beautiful power oats. So I'm going to put the lid on it. And when I'm ready, I'm just going to add hot water, stir, and I'll show you that in a second. And it's so easy just to heat meat. If I wanted to add the sugar, of course I could. I'm going to show you one more variation. If I wanted to make it a little higher in protein and calories, watch this. The next layer. I'm going to add my protein option, and I can even do the peanut butter flavor if I wanted to get creative. This is a great product. So let's start with this. Now, a typical serving of the, um, the vegan protein powder you, it's, it's by a scoop. So all these um, proteins come with a scoop. I don't recommend putting a whole serving in this little container. It would be way too strong. But when we look at a serving of the protein, it gives you 20 grams of protein. We don't need that much either. So we've got some other nutrients in here that are going to provide what we need, and there's plenty of protein. So let's just do a tablespoon. That way it will still taste really good. It will be in balance with our other items in our power oats. And again, this is just an option. I could have put the lid on it and left it just like it is, and it's going to be lovely. So I can add in my vanilla protein powder. It wouldn't affect the flavors too much. Because this one's going to have a very soft flavor. Some of the protein powders are going to be pretty loaded with vanilla or diet sugars. And you can use those, but I kind of like the ones that are as simple as you can. And then, when and if you want, you can add your own sugars. So there we go. Let's add a little bit of coconut sugar. Probably about two teaspoons. Okay? Now, we're talking a great dish. And I'll show you on your recipe, but... This is, ends up being about 320 calories. It's got 18 grams of protein. It's got seven grams of fat and about 32 grams of carbs. It's a great breakfast, a great breakfast. If I wanted to pump up the volume a little bit more of any nutrient, I've got them all at my fingertips. I could add a little more fat if I wanted to. And of course, when you add more fat, you're getting more calories. So if you need that, it's ready for you. We could also add in more protein by adding a little more of the whey. Of course, the nuts also give us a good amount of protein. All right, so lots of options. It is smelling amazing in here. Let's go check out how the beautiful mixture is doing over there on the stove. So check this out. I'm just going to bring it over and show you. They're not giving up a lot of juice, so I'm probably going to have to put a little splash of orange juice in there. And again, it's not uncommon, but they are smelling heavenly. So just to remind you, this is a blend of the apples. I only use one apple. I use my wonderful spice blend of all those warm spices. And I'm just cooking it down. It has a little bit of lemon and lemon zest. And they're actually beautiful, just like this. If I wanted to add it to my, my parfait, I could. I could add it to my oatmeal. It would be so good. Forget the sugar. You can have the sugar that's in this. It would be so good. I'm just going to give a little splash of orange juice. So when they're a little bit dry like this and you want to just hurry it up a little, um, adding the orange juice is great. If I had more apples, I could put the lid on it and it would it would eventually give up its juice and be really yummy. But let's just show you how this works so beautifully. I'm going to add three tablespoons of liquid. So again, not much, 
because I really don't want to dilute all the wonderful flavors that are in there with those spices. All right, so now we're getting pretty close. Isn't that beautiful? It just, it just pulls right in. Absolutely love it. I'm gonna let it cook for maybe a couple more minutes and I'm gonna set up our French toast. So how do you make French toast? So simple. I don't put anything in except for some ranch eggs if I'm so lucky. Um, so if you have a friend that likes to share, oh my gosh, make friends with somebody that has French eggs. They are so wonderful to use. So with French toast, we really want to of course, start with good bread. And at Powerhouse Bakery, we use our gluten-free uh, classic, but of course we could use a vegan bread. Um, at home, I also use the Ezekiel bread. It's, it's grainy, it's got some really good textures and flavors, so it's a pretty good one. Um, to do four slices of bread, three eggs is plenty. You might even go with a little bit less. But all I'm going to do is whip these up. You don't need to add milk. You don't need to add half and half or cream or any of those extra calories. Just keep it really simple. And here we go. Another use for our beautiful warm spice blend. So I'm going to add that in. And I'm going to add some essential oils. You see a pattern, right? All these wonderful things have so many uses. So it's just a shake. There's a, a really neat little top here that come, lets it come out very gradually. So a couple of shakes, that's all you need. And it starts smelling fabulous. So I'm just going to stir that. And when my skillet gets hot, I'm just going to soak the bread. So the trick is I want to get as much of that egg mixture on the bread as I can so that it really absorbs and makes it beautiful. So that is ready to go. Now, if I wanted to add a little sweetener, I could add a teaspoon or so of coconut sugar. Again, not obligatory. It's one of those things where if you want to jazz it up a little bit, you can. But again, it's one of those things where it's really good on its own. Here we go. So that's just adding a teaspoon or so of coconut sugar. And let me show you how beautiful the bread turns out. So I made these earlier today, and I want to show you just a very small amount of coconut oil, or even just spray in your pan works beautifully. Don't overdo the oil in your pan. They come out so pretty. Um, now when you can, it's a really good idea to cut the bread fairly thick. That way you can get ample soak up of all the wonderful egg. So see how pretty these are. The trick here is nice thick pieces. And see how they just fall apart. They're so fabulous and soft. And you can toast these in a toaster oven. So good. You could even put them in a, a vertical toaster as long as it doesn't touch the sides. But there's a good amount of egg on there and it's very soft and luscious. And now let's check to see if our apple awesome compote is ready to eat. Oh yes, look how gorgeous this is. It absorbed that liquid just enough, and now the apples are soft and beautiful. So now I'm just going to top my French toast with this beautiful apple compote. It had about three tablespoons of sugar for all of that, which is going to be plenty for several servings. So it's not going to be much sugar at all. Look how pretty. I love how they just kind of tossle around. We could even add a little bit of our yogurt on as a little garnish to the top. Ta-da! Isn't that so pretty? Mm, can't wait to dive in. There is our French toast with the apple compote. Now what I want to show you is how do we mix up this beautiful um, oatmeal. So there's my parfait and here is my oats. So you can carry it with you to your um, your place of work. You can have them, again, all loaded up. And I'm just going to add some hot water and show you how beautiful this mixes.
this is hot water I just microwaved and I'm going to pour that in. And again, not really important how much you measure because it's something that you know you can always add more if you need it. So I'm going to stir that, get them pretty well moistened. Yeah, that's perfect. I kind of like to add some almond milk to mine after it absorbs. So notice I didn't really measure. I'm just using my container as a way to kind of eye it and get all the oats nice and wet. I'm going to put the lid on it and I'm going to let it sit for five minutes. And when I take the lid off, it'll be perfect for eating. Cool enough to eat and it'll be fully absorbed. So it's been about five minutes and I just wanted to show you how beautiful the oatmeal turns out. So notice it's nice and thick, which means now as soon as I'm ready, I can add a little bit of extra milk and it'll be so delicious. So that is my beautiful power oats. And if I wanted to, I could add a little bit of beautiful coconut sugar right on the top. Way to go. Now, I want to show you how I did that French toast. So let me bring over that skillet. I'm going to add a little bit of the Earth Balance butter to my skillet. And notice I wanted to make sure I got nice um, soaked bread. So I'm going to make sure that it's nice and um, well saturated. And this happens to be our, our keto bread. So it still works. I'm going to soak it in the egg, make sure it gets lots of good flavor around it. And um, this is a fairly dense bread, so it works out just fine with French toast. It does not fall apart like some breads. So if you do have a softer bread, just make sure that it's, um, it's cut in pretty thick pieces. So there we go. That's ready. And now I'm going to add a little bit of butter to my skillet. And this butter is going to be a little bit more delicate than coconut oil, but it's going to work really good. So see how it's nice and hot. We want to make sure it's pretty hot so it won't stick. So I'm going to add that on, bring it right to the burner, and add my fresh toast in. Here comes these beautiful pieces, and they're going to go right in. And then, if I wanted to, I could add a little bit more of that beautiful spice right onto the top. So while that is cooking, I'm going to add a little bit more of my beautiful spice blend to that cooking French toast. So look at that. Now I've got one loaf of bread that has made me so many different batches. I've got these beautiful glass containers that I can add all kinds of beautiful toppings to. I can add my nuts. So again, one and a half almonds is a great way to add in some healthy fats. I can add in a couple of my Brazil nuts. Remember, you want five Brazil nuts a day to get all of your selenium, so that's super important. And I'm going to even add a little bit of my fruit. I've got my dried fruit, and I have that beautiful yogurt topping. So pretty. And last but not least, I've got my beautiful apple compote. So all of these wonderful additions make that breakfast just come alive. And I can set these all up and they'll stay in the fridge. Just make sure you chill them down really well before you um, put the lid on. So these great little tight fitting lids are perfect to keep everything sealed, but you want to chill it before you put the lid on and then it'll be perfect. Look how beautiful it is. It's browning up really nicely. It didn't stick at all to the pan, which I love. So we are almost ready for our next batch of French toast. So chill these down in the fridge with the lid off and they will be ready for the whole week. So just in summary, we've got several different dishes that we used simple ingredients for. We want to make sure we have protein, carbohydrates, and fats. We can get our protein from egg, which we made our beautiful French toast. Or we could use a plant-based protein, or we could even use this beautiful PB2. We also are getting protein from our beautiful yogurt. So whether you mix it up by your, um, with just a plain yogurt, or you could even use a vegan yogurt, which would be coconut or almond, and you can add in some of your extra protein with these beautiful nuts and seeds and the pea protein. So... This is one of my absolute favorite little techniques, is using these snap-on lids. You've got so many beautiful meals ready to go. So I've got a parfait, I've got 
sour oats, and I've got this beautiful French toast. All with the simple ingredients of nuts and seeds, Greek yogurt, super whole grains like oats. And again, you don't have to get gluten-free, but it's a wonderful way to get super protein from your grains. And don't forget adding some natural sweetness with apples and my beautiful uh, spice blend. It's all those warm spices that make it so special. So uh, nutmeg and cardamom, with, uh, cloves and allspice and of course cinnamon. So definitely ex experiment with some of these and remember using just natural sugars are the way to go. The apple gives lots of great sweetness. I did add in a little bit of um, orange juice if you needed to add more liquid, but then you always have this little touch of coconut sugar that would give you one more touch of sweetness. So hope to see you soon at Powerhouse Bakery and remember to power it up for breakfast because it's the most important meal of the day. Thank you.